So if you have a chiming clock in your in your house or wherever you're calling in from today, you'll know that it's 10.30. So uh, we're going to make a little bit of a slowish start so that um, the last couple of minutes people can, um, can join. Um, for those who've just joined in the last few minutes, um, please um, feel free to let us know where you're calling in from today and the organisation. And also we're looking for any tips or um, technology uh, that you found useful in the, um, in the lock during the lockdown. Uh, we've had a recommendation for Slack, which is probably one that's worth uh, worth looking into as well. We use it um, with our developers here at Upshot. Um, and so if you've got any other, <laughs> Slack is the best thing ever, apparently. So, uh, yeah, that's really good. Uh, so it's definitely worth ch uh, checking out. Thank you. Okay. Just see if we we're up to forty eight participants, which is which is absolutely brilliant. It's lovely to um, to see so many people joining. Um, thank you. And there we go. We're up to fifty. So I think we'll we'll make a start. <laughs> yes, WhatsApp does drive drive us crazy. That's for sure. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Lynn Wilson. Um, I'm from the Upshot Business Development Team. Um, I've been in touch with some of you when you've been setting up your accounts for training or offering support. Um, and I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, account and support manager, Paul Beecroft. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Paul. Um, and we'll be hearing from Paul uh, just shortly. Um, so the purpose of the webinar today um, is we'll be sharing with you some of the ways in that which Upshot can be used in the current COVID-19 situation. We've, um, we've heard from lots of people within the community the Upshot user community who are using different ways to track new or indeed existing activities in, in um, a variety of ways and we wanted to share these out to everyone. So we will be taking your questions as we go through but please can you add these to the chat I'll be keeping a close eye on the chat. Sorry being asked to speak a little louder so hopefully that's better. Anybody can let me know. Okay, so um, we will be taking questions in the chat, um, so thank you. Um, and uh, we will either um, refer to them in the call, we've only got 30 minutes today, um, or we will follow up directly with you. So um, please feel free to do that. Um, I'm sure you've all experienced some Zoom calls recently where lots of different voices can distract from uh, sharing information to all. Um, so that's the way we've chosen to do this today. Uh, we will be recording the session, so we'll be sharing it with the wider Upshot community as well. Um, so as I say, we've only got 30 minutes, so um, I just wanted to make one point um, before we go into uh, looking at the demo, or a couple of points here. Um, really important uh, to stress this. The, what we're sharing with you today are ideas um, and ways in which you can do things on Upshot. Um, it's really imperative to discuss with your team, your trustees, um, and importantly, your funders, um, what may be useful for you and it, it really depends on how you're working and how you're asked to report. Um, as you know, Upshot is quite versatile, so people use it in different ways. So please take on board some of the ideas um, and have a chat with the team, your trustees and, in, and funders, and just make sure it's in line with their reporting needs. Um, and we are, of course, happy to give more detailed and personalised support at any time. Upshot support is fully operational. We're all working from home. We're all answering the phone. Um, and we're here to help as, uh, as much as uh, we always are. Um, so feel free to share um, by email or, or phone or get in touch with us. And you'll see from the screen here, you can always reach us by email or phone um, and you can tell us your thoughts about the system as well if you've got um, certain things you want to add. I also wanted to point out the guides, which are under the help as well. Um, and particularly, we've uh, recently put together um, a guide which um, illustrates uh, the uh, work for COVID-19 as well. So it's a bit of what we cover today, but lots, lots more. So feel free to go through the guide. Um, there's lots of um, features and ideas in there as well. And then just also wanted to point out our what's new feature, which is at the top of the screen. Um, here we uh, give you updates on the latest uh, developments and features that we've, uh, we've added to the system. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Paul and we're going to go through some of some of those features now. Thanks, Lynn. And hi again all. Um, so yeah, as Lynn mentioned, I'm going to run through a few of the options from our guide here. Uh, some of these ideas may be applicable to yourselves 
as some might not be, and that's absolutely fine. For regular users of Upshot, you'll probably be aware that there's not a one-size-fits-all approach. And to reiterate, we're more than happy to discuss your organization's needs one-on-one -on -one following this. Just obviously pop it in the chat or just drop us an email or give us a call on the usual support channels. So what I'm going to focus on to begin with is around delivery. So undoubtedly, delivery has probably changed during the current situation for, for nearly all of you. So organizations may be delivering completely new strands of work, or they may just be adapting their existing, existing delivery. I want to quickly touch on if it's new delivery, first of all. So like I say, lots of organizations may be delivering these completely new strands of work. And I want to give an example here. So if I go into one of my projects, and I look at my activities here, so these are usually the way you record your, your different strands of work, like I say. So for a lot of you, you've probably never thought about doing an online pub quiz before, but recently, obviously, they've been all the rage. I'm sure you've done some over Zoom or Teams, et cetera, over the last couple of weeks. But these actually can be a really nice way of getting a group of your service users together in terms of an interaction. Like I say, this is something you probably hadn't done before. So this would be classed as a new activity on Upshot. You can add activities to your projects at any time, very simply like so. As well as that, what you'll notice from there is that once my activity is added, obviously, of course, I can add my sessions and registers. So when it took place and who came along, I can then report on all of those things. In addition, what I've done here is I've made an activity group called COVID-19 Response Work. You can make activity groups very simply by clicking on by clicking here. What this allows me to do is then group all of that new activity together that's in response maybe to COVID-19 for reporting purposes as well. In today's, um, in today's webinar, what we'll be doing is we're going to be touching on lots of different areas. So it's not always going to be a sort of step by step, but if you need any more instructions around adding an activity or adding an activity group, you want any more help on this or any of the bits, again, like I say, just reach out to us after this. That's absolutely fine. Now what I want to look at is maybe what's probably affected a lot of you is maybe then just adapting your delivery. So this might be things, if I give, a, give an example again here, so in my sports project, I run dance classes and I've been running them for the last couple of months very successfully in a local community hall. Now, obviously in the current situation, that's no longer possible, but we've decided that we're, my organization has decided that we're going to start delivering them virtually. That's absolutely fine. And a really easy win here and a really easy win for lots of you is no need to worry about creating new activities on the system is you all know that each time you record a session, so when that dance class actually takes place, you mark that against the location. So whereas previously it was the community hall every time, now all I do is I record it against a location that I've just called online. That's quite generic in my example here. If you want to be more specific, you could create locations called Zoom or WebEx or Teams, whatever, whatever system you might be using. What's really simple is you can create a location under the admin tab. You can say admin and add location. You say enter a new location. You notice there's a few required fields here. And obviously for online, there isn't really a, a proper address, if you like. This one, the line one in the town, you can just skip past by putting any, any character in here. But for a postcode, you will have to put a valid UK postcode. Just maybe put your head office's address or wherever the person running the session there, their sort of postcode there. But like I say, that's a really easy way that then what I can do for my dance classes, they've just continued like normal. But instead, what you see here is that up to the 22nd of March, I was still delivering in community halls. But instead, now going forward, I'm just delivering online. It keeps all of the work for this activity together. And I can always break that down on my various reports by location if I want to compare online and community hall later on as well. In addition, because obviously this is new delivery um, at this time, what you might find really helpful is the notes feature um, on the registers. So if I go into one of my dance registers now, what you can do with the notes is you can add a little bit more detail from that session and it can be on either the individual level or it can be on the session overall. But this can obviously prove really handy. Like I say, for, for lots of you guys here, I imagine that delivering virtually is, is probably a sort of a new area of a sort of new type of delivery for you. Maybe hasn't always been done before, or at least not that frequently. So these notes can obviously be really helpful to just help your teams out in terms of their delivery. So for example, the notes obviously can be anything, but for Jeff Handy, if we say here, Jeff 
struggled to connect may ask him to join five to ten minutes earlier next time. That would obviously allow your session to get off to a prompt start. It would maybe just be a good reference for whoever's going to deliver the dance class next time, just to know that maybe there was this kind of issue for Jeff. But as well as this, and what's perhaps uh, slightly more important, or what be, might be slightly more relevant, because this is a new way of delivering, you might find it helpful to put in the notes for the session overall, the actual structure for that session. So how you went about delivering it online, anything that worked really well or anything that maybe didn't work as well when you tried to do that delivery online compared to in the village hall. Where this can be really helpful then is say one of your team members in a couple of weeks time, they're going to look to deliver dance or they're going to look to deliver something virtually for the first time. They can just have a quick look back on these notes and go, okay, this is what really worked well. I'm going to try and reiterate that in, in my session. So it's just a handy little internal tip there. Great, thanks Paul. Um, so I can see there's a lot of um, local authorities here um, joined us, so people from, from those organisations are working with local authorities. And in fact, one got in touch uh, recently looking for a way to tag existing sessions. Um, can you share that with us, Paul? Um, I think it might be new to some users. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't think the session tags is, is too widely used by organisations, but I just want to show how that could maybe be helpful in this time. So if I now go into my education and employment project here, I may deliver things, uh, activity such as workshops. Now tags can be a really good way of recording the content or the theme of those particular sessions. So my workshops theme and content could vary from week to week. But I maybe want a way of breaking that down. And this is where tags can, tags can actually be, be very helpful. So what I can do here is Obviously, at the moment, we may want or our workshops may have been focused around delivering some practical health and safety advice to service users or to how they can keep their friends and family safe during this safe during this period. As well as that, obviously, with the employment focus, it could have been uh, workshops around how they access uh, furloughing schemes and stuff and things around those lines. But just to show you how you would add a tag to an existing session here. If I go in here and if I now say edit session, this can be done for new sessions as well. But if I say edit session, what you'll notice here is you're probably all familiar with the date, time, duration, location, etc. options, but tags just sits under here. What I can do here is if I type in, say, COVID-19, like I say, we have that session tag focus of COVID-19. Like I say, we, we maybe covered some things around employment rights at this time, etc. What it allows now is now I've typed in the tag once, that would be searchable by other team members, say if they want to tag other following workshops based on this or other uh, sessions in my projects. But as well as that, I could then use the attendance report just to break down and say, okay, I only want to look at, I'll just show you how that works. I only now want to look at sessions related to this tag here, to COVID-19. So it can be a really good way of breaking down my, breaking down my uh, workshops activity. Great, that's brilliant. So I'm getting some questions in the in the uh, in the chat, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, so so that tags can be really useful. Um, I also see we have some organisations who I know are calling out to um, vulnerable people in the community. In fact, my dad, who is 92, um, recently received a call and he was so thrilled. Um, so I know that there's a lot of organisations doing that kind of inter interaction. Um, and I guess that's, it's really important for organisations to track that during this, this uh, difficult time. Yeah, so a lot of organisations have got in touch about this, actually. So they're, they're going out of their way, um, either um, doing check-in phone calls or delivering stuff like groceries or prescriptions to individual service users, perhaps the more vulnerable members of society that they work with, which is obviously really great to see. Um, one way of recording this on the system is through timeline events. So timeline events are a really powerful way of recording your interactions with individuals. So if I give an example here, so if I go to Lucy's profile, see if we now go to her timeline, what you can see here is basically some previously recorded ones, but I want to just take you through how this would work. So 
At this point, with timeline events, I can add individual milestones or different bits and pieces to that, to that person's profile to really build up a, a picture of the work that we've done with them. In this instance, it may be things such as COVID-19 delivery or COVID-19 phone call. Timeline events, by the way, can be added at any point under the admin tab and timeline events. Obviously, it would only be users with the relevant sort of system admin access that would be able to do this. But if you want to get in touch and you've got any questions about this, again, just pick up the phone following this, it's absolutely fine. So if we give the example here that we recorded a COVID-19 uh, phone call with Lucy, what's really great around timeline events is yes, I can say what date it occurred on, but I can also add a bit of uh, context. So I can actually add a bit of detail of what happened in the phone call or maybe what was brought up. So Lucy was worried she hadn't heard from her family for a couple of days and was running low on supplies. Of course, it could be anything here. You can format this in various ways, as you can see. What I want to point out is a couple of things here. One, this can be linked back to projects, activities and outcomes if needed. But in addition to that, if obviously the, the content of the phone call was maybe a bit sensitive, so maybe it was um, only things that only certain users could see or should be able to see and report on, you can list here who should have access and it will exclude other, other users. We're going to talk more around timeline events in the next webinar and that we touched on at the end of today's one. But what I could say here is, okay, only Jesse and myself as Upshot Support should have access to this. Tony shouldn't be able to see the little bit of content that was around that phone call. If I save this now, what you see is that this can start to build up. So we can look, uh, we can look now and we can look back, hopefully in a couple of months time, about the different work that we delivered to support Lucy during this period. So the different phone calls and groceries, uh, deliveries maybe that we made. Where this can become more powerful is we've just added a new feature to the system called timeline event reports. So I go to that now. What we can use this to do is we can use this to see, okay, how many deliveries or how many phone calls have I made in the last week or last couple of weeks? You'll see your other timeline event types here as well. This can also be broken down that little bit further. So what I can see here, just to, just to illustrate this, because this may be new to a lot of you, is that I've actually made uh, COVID-19 deliveries to 14 uh, different individuals, and those deliveries have occurred a total of 18 times. When I break this down, I can see that there was um, 14 deliveries of groceries, three deliveries of prescriptions, et cetera. Where this, like I say, where this can become more powerful is if maybe for my reporting purposes, and maybe I, I need to know, I want to know, is how many, deliver, um, how many deliveries, for example, I've made in the last week. I can select the dates here. So I can say from Sunday the 12th to Saturday the 18th. I can select various other filters as well if I've associated my timeline events with that. I filter that down and I can see, okay, in that particular week, we only made the, the free deliveries for three different attendees. And two of those were prescription deliveries and one was, one was another. So using this uh, new timeline events report could be a really good way to, to look back on them or look back on that overall as well. And like I say, then the next webinar will focus uh, a lot on timeline events and this, uh, and this new feature. Great, Paul, thank you. Um... And in order to deliver these uh, services, I, I'm aware that we've got quite a few um, questions on the chat, which um, I think we have a, a one of the solutions anyway um, coming up. But um, just before we get to that, um, in order to deliver these services, Paul, um, obviously the reporting tools in Upshot can help people identify where resources need to be deployed and prioritized. Um, yeah. Can you show us a little bit around that? Yeah, exactly. So a really good first step, and um, I know a lot of organizations have taken, is to use their people report. So the people report is possibly the most powerful reporting tool on Upshot. It allows you to look across all your organization's participants and attendees and break that down using various filters. Obviously, at this moment in time, if you are concerned or you're looking to identify maybe the, the more vulnerable service users that you have and you, and you want to find those quite quickly, probably the filters that you're concerned with is stuff around age, medical conditions, disabilities, as well as that maybe people that come from uh, low areas in terms of IMD as well. Maybe that there may be residents that need a little bit more support at this time. If I give the example here, so if I just change my age filter and I look for people in perhaps what, what would be termed as that more at risk bracket, 
I can look here, I can scroll to the bottom. You can see that I could add various other filters if I wanted to. The people report is super powerful in this way. I'd hit go at the bottom. What you see is that I then get eight matches here. So I just want to touch on a couple of things overall on this one. First off, with these eight matches, I could download this. This would give me more information on those eight individuals, maybe their phone numbers or email addresses if I wanted to then reach out to them. In terms of email, obviously you can see I can send them an email directly from the system at this point. So that could obviously be really handy, save you a bit of time. In general, using the email tool on Upshot could obviously be a really helpful way of communicating any changes to your service users at this time. In addition, you'll notice here that I can save a reporting template. So obviously I only selected the age filter higher up, but if I'd have selected multiple filters, maybe five or six, and this is a report I'm gonna be running uh, quite regularly from here on in, I don't want to have to remember those filters every time. So I can just save a reporting template. That means that when I come in, just at the top here, I can select COVID-19 support needed and it will remember my filters. What some of the more eagle-eyed among you will have probably realized at the bottom here, I've added what we call a, a custom field here at the bottom. I've added a custom field to my registration form. This can be done again under the admin tab and attendee data fields. Again, if you're unclear about that, give us a call following this. But what this allows me to do is I can mark on, say, Lucy's registration form, for example, that she's an individual that requires COVID-19 support, which means that when I come to my people report, I can very simply not worry about my other filters higher up necessarily, if, unless if I wanted to, of course, but I come into my people report, I very simply just select yes here and go, and then I can get my, my matches here, for example. So that can be a really, that can be a quicker way of just identifying these, these individuals. In addition to that, there's also the map as well. And the map can be a really nice visual way um, and a visual tool, if you like, for helping you coordinate your response. So what this does, obviously, just to give you a bit of background, if you haven't used the map before, is the little uh, black icons here will indicate my, my service users, so people that have attended, and I can filter them down in various ways on the left-hand side here. What may be quite helpful is obviously knowing where these individuals are based, and this obviously comes from their, their postcodes on the system is then obviously can help you coordinate your volunteers response if maybe you are doing those deliveries that we mentioned earlier on but in addition to that in just working out maybe where the areas are that um, people may need a bit more support you'll see that i can apply overlays to the map one may be around population density and i can toggle this by by age as well here but we know obviously you know from here from the news that people that probably live in areas of higher population density and maybe finding the, the lockdown that, that little bit harder um, and probably do need that little bit more support. So this can be another tool, like I say, of just helping you, uh, helping you identify which users and need that bit more support. The darker colours here obviously indicate um, the slightly more densely populated areas. Great, Paul, thanks. I want to use the, um, the time that we've got left. Um, there's quite a few questions coming in about signing <laughs> people up um, quickly and, and, and easily. Um, so yeah, so while extending services into into your communities, it's likely that you're um, contacting new people that aren't uh, necessarily registered, and obviously it's not the best time to be dealing with uh, with uh, paper forms, etc. Um, so uh, yeah, the attendee sign up form is something that um, could be really useful for a lot of people on the call today. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably really impractical to get out a physical paper registration form to someone and they send it back to you, et cetera. So I wanna just talk you through um, this feature, as Lynn mentioned, called the attendee sign up form. So this is something that has to be activated in the background by us. Um, it's obviously completely free to use like all the other tools on the system. And if you want us to activate that, just get in touch and we will help you build an initial form. To give you a little bit of background, the attendee sign up form has probably been available for the last 12 to 18 months. What it allows is a registration form to take, um, take place electronically. So rather than you worrying about paper forms that you then get back and you have to complete by people and add new to add participants to the system, what you can do with this, and it might not just be helpful now, it might be helpful in saving your team's admin time going forward, is you can have an external link which can be shared via email, WhatsApp, text, etc. can be put on your website allowing potential service users to register all their details themselves. So you see here that I've just re recreated my registration form. 
for this external process and we're more than happy to help you guys recreate your recreate your forms for this purpose what i can do once i've emailed this out to the participant they would go through and fill all this in again they would then know obviously the data they've shared which can be a little bit better as well they agree to the terms and conditions at the end and they sign up at the bottom so they click that link then what happens is you guys you still have management at this time you can still manage this process so once they've signed up they get added to this attendee sign up waiting list so i've got two potential service users that have filled out all their registration details here i can still click on edit and accept i can review those details that they've put in so maybe if there's something that doesn't make a little bit of sense i can maybe reach out and get in contact with them there but what i can crucially do is i can just accept them onto the system which means that michelle is now searchable and she can obviously be added to my register so maybe for my dance class as well but what it enables you to do there is take that whole registration uh, process online for, for getting new new service users like i say you might find this helpful not obviously just now but just generally in terms of cutting down the admin time and moving towards maybe more of a, a paperless approach for your organization just to add to that, Paul, I think people are expressing that, um, you know, they want to get people onto the system um, quickly and easily so that they can add them to the registers for, the, for instance, the online sessions that they're doing. Um, you don't have to use all of the questions um, that you have in your normal registration form. No. So a shortest, lighter version of that. Yeah, exactly. So what you'll have noticed, if we just go back to the form builder here, is that I have um, my available form field so that there'll be all the fields shown from your full registration form. But yes, as Lynn quite rightly says, I can just pick a minimized version of this if I want just for the time being, just to get that basic info off the individuals. And then obviously I can always pick up the conversation later. So if I now go to Michelle's profile, for example, and she's obviously the individual that completed that online form, we'll actually go to her profile. I see all of that registration form again. So even if I hadn't included those fields on the external form, and I can obviously look to complete them if necessary in working with Michelle. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's going to be really helpful. And as Paul said, just to reiterate, if you need help setting that form up, it's something that we enable um, at Upshot for you, and then uh, we can help build that form for you as well. Um, just we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, I just wanted to touch on one of the questions that came in. Um, one of our organizations getting a lot of response on social media um, and people obviously using social media really effectively um, at the moment um, one way in which that can be captured um, particularly if you're doing videos or uh, posts or, or anything is through the media library um, and it's also useful for a couple of other things um, so paul could you show us a bit about that yeah exactly so as lynn mentioned the media library could be um, really helpful here for, for lots of you obviously probably for the vast majority of you at this time, you're now working from home, you and your teams are all working from home. And obviously, and we found this ourselves that, you know, you've got documents saved on maybe shared servers back at work or saved on a computer back at, back at the main office, for example, that you can now no longer access, or if you have to try and get into a terminal server, it can maybe be painfully slow. What the media library here can be really helpful with is it can be a nice place to just share some of those documents that your team are likely to need. So media on Upshot doesn't just have to be pictures and videos. Obviously, that'd be a really nice way of uploading and storing those social media stories that Lynn mentioned. But as well as that, it could be things such as like an organization's health and safety policy or a referral form, for example, or it might be that download of service users that need support. It can be a variety of different things, Word documents, PDFs, Excel files. My point being here is that rather than your team maybe struggling to get into a, a terminal server or the like, or having to get all the files of one individual in the team who has them all stored, they can obviously store them safely into your Upshot account. And then any of your Upshot users, um, so the individuals that log in, they can then find these, uh, find these documents and then can use them nice and easily, very quickly rather than relying on trying to get them from somewhere else or get into somewhere else to, to get them. Excellent, thanks. Yeah, and um, Melody, I think it was that brought up the question regarding, uh, you know, social media activity. Um, obviously, it's great to, to keep a record of this on your media library if you can, because you can add web links um, and links to the different parts as well. So, um, yeah, that's definitely one to, uh, to, to look at. Um, Great uh, questions coming in and some interest around um, particularly timeline events. 
Um, we're just up to 11 o'clock, so we're coming to the end now. But I did want to uh, firstly thank Paul for, uh, for going through um, those points. But also uh, just to say that we will be following up with you um, on a, uh, with an upshot survey. Um, and for those of you who aren't using surveys yet, that's going to be a, the subject of a later webinar. Um, so uh, we will be following up with the survey just to find out what you thought about this and how useful it was. Personally, um, I thought your exchanges on the chat were fantastic because um, you've shared actually some tools, some information um, and some nice comments about upshot. So thank you for that. Um, so we feel that these, these uh, webinars are going to be uh, really useful, but we'd like to know from your point of view if they are. Um, so yes, as Paul mentioned, the next one will be about timeline reports in two weeks' time. So um, same place, same time, um, in two weeks' time, put the kettle on and join us for a virtual coffee, and we'll go through timeline events together um, in a bit more detail. But meanwhile, thanks so much for joining us today, and stay safe and stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much, all. Cheers.